Yeah. Okay. Let's ask uh, Andy here. Andy, what do you think about this conversation? Do you think it's okay to have the year of the slut? Uh, Jen has a book, year of the slut. What do you think about that? <clears throat> the biggest slut that I've ever known was a woman named Jen. And, and I've met thousands of women. So I, I, I like you very much. I think you're intelligent. I think you're attractive. I think you're well-spoken. I think women could be sluts as much as they want. I mean, it's, it's a empowering for a woman to, uh, you know, she can, if, if she's a slut, she kind of takes like some of the control the dude has away by putting her on a pedestal, you know, like <clears throat> if you're a slut, you can't really be a, you kind of like own yourself. You can't be held to like some high fictional standard. Like uh, you can't do, you can't look at guys. You can't never fuck nobody else. Like I wouldn't want, you know, I wouldn't want to fuck no chick that was like brand new, you know, like never been with nobody first time falling in love. Like I wouldn't want that emotional hang up. I would be out there. I would actually rather meet sluts, you know, Alisa would, uh, huh? you ever tell your friend about, you ever tell your friend about you and Captain Content hooking up? Why would I tell, tell her about, about why would I tell her that's about your, that? That's your relatable experience. That's your hookup story. Hey, hey, uh, um, Jen, Elisa, she, she's been on this famous show, Howard Stern, before. She went all the way from the ranks to Howard Stern. She went down 11 rings on the ladder. She hooked up with a short little Spanish bisexual midget, and she let him lick her vagina one time. After one lick, she stopped the escapades and because she just, like, froze up, got frigid and, and whatnot. Do you have any uh, opinions? <clears throat> what do you think Elisa uh, stopped uh, the Spanish midget bisexual little dwarf from giving her, uh, you know, satisfaction? I think a woman is allowed to say no at any time if she's no longer into it. And, you know, maybe she was into it when they began and then she had a change of heart. And I think that's completely acceptable. Also, Absolutely. Andy, Andy Absolutely. you're not explaining it right. That's not, you're, he's way off, uh, Jen. What happened was, was that I didn't know the guy well enough to be in that situation with him. I wanted to get to know him better and see what his intentions were. I found out his intention was not to have a relationship. So I don't want to be hooking up with people that don't want a relationship with me. That is not what I yeah. want. That's exactly where I'm at in my life now as well. Like I'm, you know, I'm not you interested don't, so, in hooking so. up anymore. But also I want, what I want to make clear is like, it's called year of the slut, but it's, taking the word slut from the point of view of a girl who only thought she'd ever be with one man. So anything yeah. more than one man in her own psyche was, you know, was being a slut. So it's basically redefining the word for a very sheltered, yet naive girl. It's not, you know, it's not basically saying like, yes, you know, go jump on everything. Go jump on every dick you can find. Like that's, that's <laughs> it's a super story. slut. Um, there's levels. There's a slut, there's a super slut, super saiyan slut. Like you just go no, higher and higher. No, but also it's higher. deconstructing a word that's weaponized against women. I knew it should. someone wants to attack a woman, there are very specific words they use. And if a woman is in her teens and twenties, the go-to word is slut. That's regardless right. Regardless of whether or not she's promiscuous <laughs> or not. So I wrote a book about feminism, a sex positive book about female sexuality that's deconstructing a word that's weaponized against us. And that mm -hmm. has been weaponized against us since the dawn of time. And it has to do with males wanting to have control over women. Okay, Absolutely. so... Males want to control what women do. They want to control our uterus. They want to control our right to choose. They want to control how many partners we've had before we, before we partner with them. And they're going to judge us based on that. They're going to judge our value. Why though? What is worth. that? Is that just like insecurity? What makes the dude like most guys, what, what makes most guys like that? They compare themselves. I, I don't like, know, but. Cause you I ladies aren't really like that. To. Are you? You know, you're not you like that, Elisa. Y'all women aren't really like that. You don't like look at a dude and, and have you fucked five ladies? Has he fucked four, 40 ladies? Like you don't well, really I mean we don't want him to be promiscuous currently. <laughs> <we're with him. laughs> but Elisa, you oh I mean I'm gonna I can't even Elisa and promiscuous or promiscuous, whatever the word is. I don't even, I mean, you, you, you're disqualified from the conversation because well, why am I disqualified for this? He had a, he had a cross dressing 400 pound man, give him head on the public sidewalk in Los Angeles in the middle of a, a week night on a, on a street where little kids are riding by in cars, looking out their apartment windows where, I mean, you can't really, uh, you know, you should do your research, Elisa, Jiminy Christmas.
You you literally hooked up with the biggest pervert ever, and uh, now you're worried about who's promiscuous. Yeah, but now you're slut shaming her. Like, like for absolutely no reason. This is the you know, problem, they, Jen. This is why you had to write this book. Exactly what we're talking about. Exactly. This you know, is God why this forbid, book. God forbid a woman makes a choice, <laughs> tries something, decides it's not for her, and, you know, Andy, you're like intent on shaming her, you know, for the <laughs> of this discourse, you're intent on shaming her for a decision she made that she doesn't, that she's not necessarily, you know, happy to talk about. You're not, <laughs> you're not reflecting the story the way that, that she would convey the story. Exactly. You know, you're not letting her tell her side of the story. Meanwhile, you, you find this a valid reason to shame her and you're considering <laughs> her less than because of a decision she made in her past. And you don't know what mental state she was in. You don't know what emotional state she was in. You know, there might have been a lot of other things. Is, going there on ever in her life. A, is there ever a mental or emotional state that makes it OK for you to get your dick sucked on a sidewalk on a weeknight in front of kids and old women in on public street? I would say no, but there are a lot of people. Thank you. At least you're intelligent. You don't have to like make up, like make believe land where that's okay. So that's the type of guy that Elisa hooks up with. Uh, you're very intelligent. Thank you, Jen. Or uh, I mean, uh, yeah, thank you, Elisa. You, you you don't look bad, but you have the brain of like a peanut. So sharpen up a little bit, please. Catch up. You're looking like a tomato. Okay. Why? Why do you let him speak? You know, I just try to have let everybody have a voice. But um, so he's judging me based off of one thing that I did in my whole life. And and he's judging that person. And I just think that's very wrong to shame somebody for their choices and who they've been with. And he didn't understand the situation at all. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I, he is this is everything that's wrong with um, a lot of men uh, today. And, and, you know, women slut shame, too. Oh, we slut shame way more than men do. We are okay. actually the worst ones at it. Like, okay. you know, and, and like Andy said, a lot of guys like a slut, you know, like they're into they it. They do, but then they, it, it's confusing. Do they like them or not? Because, I mean, at the beginning, Andy was saying he does like sluts. And then at the end, he's slut shaming me. So, I mean, which is it? The thing is. Can we ever be good enough, Jen? We'll, we'll never, we're always going to be not enough or too much of something because we're women. That's just, that's just the lives that we lead, right? Like, it doesn't matter. I, I, I really think that we cannot win. No, so we can't. We're we, constantly we, we, going to be criticized. You yeah, know? we're constantly going to be criticized. And judged and shamed. And judged and shamed no matter what, unless. Unless I think the one kind of woman that is not shamed is someone uh, like married with children. Yep. They, they're not typically, are, are you married, Jen? No, not yet. Okay. Okay. So you're not married. Okay. So, so the, the type of woman that I think there's like one type that everybody's kind of okay with, and that's a woman uh, and they don't care if she works or not that, you know, as long as she's in a family, that woman's okay. But everybody else, we have to be so careful of who we're with and who, what our choices are, what we do. But you know oh, what? oh, you're too old to do this. Oh, you can't do IRL. You're, you know, you can't do a podcast. You can't do this. You can't do that. You're too old. You're too this. You're too that. You, you don't look good enough. It's like you're, you're never enough. Well, I was going to say, even women who are like married with kids, do they work? Oh, well, they spend all their time working and they're not a good enough mom because they, right. you know, they need a nanny or they need help or they don't have help and the kids don't get enough attention. And, you know, the kids are on their own after school for several hours or the mom doesn't work. And it's like, oh, she's so lazy. Like being a mom isn't that hard. Like, why didn't she go back to work after the kids were in school? Yes. Like, I hear it from every angle. I have a lot of friends who are moms, who are wives. Some of them work, some of them don't work, some of them have help, some of them don't have help. And, you know, because I'm not in the mix, like I'm, I, I'm not married with kids yet. I'd like to be um, one day, but, you know, I'll, I'll hear it from each end. And it's like, you know, the moms that work are a little jealous of the moms that don't work. The moms that mm -hmm. don't work are jealous that the moms that work have their own money and don't have to rely on their husband and justify their expenses or if they want to go and splurge on a pair of shoes or a handbag or whatever. Like, I think being a woman is just hard. It, well, but but it, it really is. That. I'm so it's happy that you're saying that. I'm so happy that you're saying that because, like, you know, you're obviously a very attractive 
intelligent woman. Thank and you. people think that we have, and I'd like to put myself in that category. Um, I, you know, people think that we have it so easy and that things are handed to us, but I think it's actually the opposite. 